already picked out my grave His plan had moved forward to put me away I drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine Now I'm safe from all harm For he walked through the storm when he came looking for me Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose, and we have some wonderful addiction free testimonies for you to hear what God has done in their life, the transformations that has happened to them once they made a whole heart commitment to the Lord Jesus. Hi, I'm Chuck Mantooth, and this is my wife, Ginger Mantooth. We're the directors of the Russellville Teen Challenge. And we want to give a little of our testimony. Um, I had a normal life, normal childhood. I didn't get in any kind of addiction until I was around 20 years old. Um, I got hurt really bad. And I, the doctor prescribed pain pills. So I took, a, I took them for about four years. And the doctor said, well, you might be getting hooked on them. So they, ta they took me off of them. And, of course, I was hooked on them. And I, in my mind, I thought, well, i got to have them. So I did whatever I had to do to get them, and, um, which that led me down the wrong path. I was in addiction for 14 years, and I did things I'm not proud of. I ended up having to do four years in county jail. And that's where God started really talking to me. Because you didn't have anything else to do in county jail. When you watch four years of your life click away. So I talked to God. And when I got out, I went into a program. And um, I was actually there 18 months. Graduated. And then I worked for them for about a year and a half. Where I met my wife. And I knew her. We were in the same hometown. That's where we're from. The same place and you know God will bring you together he'll bring you who you want to who, who you need to have in your life we don't have to search for anything and we've been married now for almost four years and uh, thank you for letting me share hi like Chuck said my name's Ginger um, at the age of 32, I found myself at one of the lowest places um, I think I'd ever been. Um, I was raised in a very good home. I um, was in a really bad car wreck in 2004, and I became heavily addicted to the pain medication that they put me on. Um, at that time, um, I had um, became... Um, used to taking the medication. So um, I did everything and anything I could to uh, get that medicine. And so I lost my home. I was a nurse at that time, and I lost my license. I lost my kids. And for 12 years, I didn't even see my kids. And um, I found myself sitting in a jail cell. And um, my cousin, um, who was one of the people that you never thought would fight for you, um, fought every day to get me out of that jail cell. And um, he found Teen Challenge for me. And uh, he went to the judge, and they actually court ordered me. And in December 29, December 29th of 2011, I walked through the doors of the Knoxville Teen Challenge. And um, on January the 29th of 2012, um, my life, I rededicated my life, and I was saved. And um, I graduated January the 22nd of 2013, and I decided to stay on. Since then, um, the Lord has given everything back. I married Chuck. We actually moved to Arkansas two years ago, and we, the Lord blessed us um, with a brand new home. We have never, neither one of us have ever owned a home. And uh, God sent Pastor Don Norton, actually, and we bought our first home. 
and uh, Pastor Jared and Miss Kim Flanagan, Miss Kate, Miss Kim Bolding. They've been nothing but a blessing to all of us. And uh, to be able to say that 10 years this decade, um, it's very emotional to know um, I wouldn't be here today if they hadn't answered the call of God 10 years ago. So for that, I want to say thank you, and I'm very grateful to God and to the Flanagans. Thank you all. My name is Shannon. I'm 33 years old, and I'm with the Russellville, Arkansas Teen Challenge. Um, I'm just going to share a little bit of my testimony. When I was, I came from a broken home, and when I was five, my dad died of a cocaine overdose, and there was a lot of hurt. And trauma from that I was too young to really understand but I just remember the hurt that my mom was going through um, there was a lot of abuse in my home um, with my mother having to watch my mother get beat and so fear became very real at a very young age for me and that's something I struggled with um, when I was eight I began to experience with um, alcohol and by the time I was 14, I was exper experimenting with drugs. Um, I got pregnant when I was 15 years old and had my first child at the age of 16. Um, I was really too young to understand how to parent, and I began to try to run from my responsibilities and continued back into my addiction. Um, it just became more and more um, hard, uh, as far as the drugs are concerned, more more and more uh, harder drugs, and I became an IV drug user. Um, by the age of 24, I had five children, and I lost my children due to my addiction. Um, I began to commit crimes and things of that nature and went to prison in 2013. Um, I was very lost, broken, and confused. Um, I, didn't, I was always searching for something, and so I began uh, to become involved in gang activity and um, moved to California, and I was um, with my husband involved in that and um, had a hit put out on my life um, from, from the gang, and I ran from that and came back to Arkansas. Um, and I, again, did a, another year in prison um, after that, and uh, my life was just a down, downward spiral due to my addiction and the things, uh, me not knowing how to deal with situations um, properly and so I began to um, lose my children I um, my, my mother got custody of them and I just pretty much had lost my my all hope my self-worth my children just everything um, my life began to change um, I knew that I needed something when I got to prison the second time and I felt a tug at my heart calling me into a program um, that was a faith-based program. And so I entered into the program, and um, I, that night I surrendered and gave my life to Christ. And my life has been forever changed from that um, decision that I made. Um, I have begun to get my children back. I don't have them living with me, but my oldest... I lost her when she was five, and she's 16 now, and 11 years later, she lives under my roof, and that my life has just completely changed. I work for an amazing ministry, um, the Teen Challenge program. Um, I'm able to share with the ladies um, hope because I've been there, and so I'm able to share Christ with them, and Jesus has come in and made me a quality of woman that I never thought I could be, and he has completely changed my life upside down for the good. And I am so very grateful. Hi, my name is Angie. I work for the Arkansas Women's Teen Challenge. Um, I came into the program June 30th of 2016. Um, but as a child, I grew up with my grandfather as my dad. My dad was in and out of prison my entire life. And my grandfather passed in 2006. And unable to deal with my grief, I actually um, spiraled out of control, and I fell into a meth and an opiate addiction. I actually went to treatment in 2007 and got clean um, and continued to stay clean over the course of about eight years. Um, however, the enemy was able to use my guilt and shame against me. And after I uh, went through a relationship breakup, 
um, I felt hopeless and distraught, and I didn't know where to turn. I felt like I had lost love again, and um, and so I attempted suicide um, April 1st of 2016. I took a combination of over 150 prescription pills and ended up on life support for three days. Um, I woke up angry at God for not taking me out. Um, and so I tried to um, drink myself to death over the course of about two weeks until I caught um, some charges with the law. And um, having that experience, that was that was new for me. I had never been in trouble with the law. And so um, I decided to get some help. Uh, my family had wanted me to get help um, through Teen Challenge in 2007. And I didn't, I didn't see how I could leave my children um, without a mother for that time. And so... Um, in 2016, I came into Teen Challenge, and from the get-go, I, I had a hard time communicating with God how I felt, and um, about the second month of my program, I cried out to God, and I told Him that I didn't know how to trust in a God I couldn't see, and that, that very next day, I received a letter from my daughter and there was a rainbow that my daughter my youngest daughter had uh drawn me and that the holy spirit used that picture and um revealed to me through through the holy spirit that god said that this is how i proved my love to noah and ever since then it's been a learning process but my relationship with god has continued to grow and the more that i'm willing to give god and to trust him with the more he gives back to me my relationship with those children that that i set aside for all of that time um, is stronger now than it has ever been i actually have um, fathers uh, in my life that bring my children to me, that no longer try to keep uh, my children from me. And through this ministry, God has allowed me to become a licensed uh, minister. And I owe that all to Teen Challenge and through the grace and the mercy that God has shown me. And I'm forever grateful for what he's going to continue to do. Hi, my name is Brooke. Um, I'm 26 years old and I'm from Belgrade, Missouri. Um, my story kind of starts out uh, growing up, I had a family, a mom and dad, an older brother, and a younger sister. And from the outside looking in, my family was uh, as close to perfect as could be expected. And um, little did anyone know that um, behind the scenes, actually, in my life, um, I was struggling with um, a sexual abuse of someone who worked for my father that no one knew about. And it was something that I didn't understand, you know, and it, it tormented me as a child. Um, as a result, um, from the pain of this, I started actually drinking with my mother at seven years old. And this um, started the beginning of a, many, many years of addiction in my life where um, I suffered for more sexual abuse, physical abuse from um, everyone in my life pretty much. And um, as a result of that, <laughs> I became a very angry young lady. And at 10 years old, um, I was at my school and someone who was making fun of me, I actually kind of snapped on them. And um, I hurt her really bad. And um, this is something I've regretted my whole life. I ended up spending about two years in a juvenile detention center because of what I had done to this young lady. And um, in my two years in this juvenile detention center, it was me, um, four brick walls, a steel door, and a Bible. And this is what started my deep hatred for the Lord um, in my life. I blamed him for everything, the love and the compassion that he talks about in the word and that these people talked about things that he had done for them and saved them from was something that I had never had. And this made me just want to die. I felt completely worthless, unloved. I mean, just unworthy of any of the gifts that the Lord had. And, um, for the next probably eight years of my life, I was in and out of rehabs, juveniles, jails, mental institutions. They diagnosed me and labeled me with things, um, bipolar, you know, ADHD, and no one could ever really figure out, you know, what stemmed this anger that I had had my entire life that kept leading me into bad relationships, bad decisions, uh, more drug abuse. Around 19 years old, I started IV using um, methamphetamines, and um, 
this was something that I thought I had I have found, you know, the answer to all my problems. I don't have to feel anything anymore. It takes away the pain, the nightmares, the crying uh, myself to sleep. I don't have, because I didn't have to sleep anymore because I was uh, using the drug to replace where God wasn't in my life, but I didn't realize that at the time. Um, fast forward a little bit. Um, last year, and my younger sister had actually followed right in my footsteps. Last year, um, I was in county jail for uh, drug charges with my younger sister, and we got a call that my mother had passed away while we were both in jail. Um, my mother was my best friend, even though we had been in addiction together my entire life pretty much. I still loved my mother more than anyone in the world, and this was a heartbreaking experience for me and my sister as well. Um, all I can remember is for the first time in my life, I cried out to the Lord, and I asked him, God, I've been uh, doing drugs my whole life. I've been running from all these problems my whole life, and the person that I've run to is now gone. And I looked over to my sister, and I realized I'm the only one who's here for her now too. I can't do this on my own. And God worked on me for about seven months, and I didn't even realize that he was working on me. Um, and after that I found out that my mother was dead, I got introduced to the Teen Challenge program in Russellville, Arkansas. And this is where I began my new walk with Jesus Christ. And I have, since coming into the program of October 23rd last year, I've accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior. And I found my true best friend. And I found the one who has saved me from all of the things that I could not save myself from. And it is something that I will never forget the day that um, he blessed me with his Holy Spirit, and it's something that I hope that everyone in the entire world gets to experience. Hi, my name is Ashley, and I am with the Russellville Teen Challenge, and I just want to share a little bit of my testimony with y'all. When I was 15, I started battling depression really bad, and, and I didn't know how to cope with that. Um, at that age, I started comparing myself to other girls, most, or, well, mostly just people my age, um, and I developed an eating disorder from that. Um, I was never bulimic or anorexic, but I did starve myself, um, and that's something that I struggled with for about seven years. Um, when I was 17 years old, um, I started taking pain pills every day before I was going to school just to cope with that emptiness that I felt from not having my dad around and my mom being as distant as she was. And so um, I started using harder drugs. I started using meth really bad. Um, I was court ordered to Teen Challenge in September of 2015. And God has completely changed my life with this program. He has taught me how to have a relationship with him where I didn't have before. He has taught me that I don't have to weigh 90 pounds to be beautiful. I don't have to starve myself to be just as pretty and loved as everybody else is. And God has just completely rocked my world with this program. Thank you. Friends, once again, wonderful testimonies. I'll never get tired of hearing what the Lord has done in someone's life. How about you, Tim? Oh, yes. It's been some awesome, powerful testimonies. And because, and we know that, None of us could change ourselves. It has to be Jesus. And so this is why I bring you this show every week, because we want you to know that what God has done in all of our guests' lives, he wants to do it in your life too. And you know, many of you have been through some horrific things through your life. And many of you have turned to alcohol and drugs to find relief and temporary peace. But you see, that's all it is, is temporary. We think it's long-term. See, this is a spiritual battle. Our favorite verse that we always say is John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief has come to steal, kill and destroy. And that's what he does with these horrible addictions. It's an epidemic. People are dying every day. And, and so many losses. Some of you are going through losses. Some of you have already lost relationships, maybe even your children. Maybe you've been to jail already or prison, or maybe you've got a court case coming. And, and also maybe your, your own health is suffering from it. But you know what? God is a restorer. If, when you give your life to him, if you just wane on him and 
and, and you'll see that he can take everything that the enemy meant for bad and turn it for good. Because the other part of Gen John 10.10, 10, uh, Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And that's what he does. And so we want to offer you that opportunity to give your life to Christ right now. Tammy's going to agree with me in prayer that you are going to say yes to Jesus and say no to that old lifestyle. Be willing to leave it behind. That's what the word repentance in the Bible means. And so when you uh, say that prayer and you mean it, See, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you the power. And you not only then won't want to do those things, you will start to fall in love with Jesus because that's what he wants, a relationship with you. So Tammy's going to agree with me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Thanks for dying on the cross for me. Thanks for loving me, for forgiving me. I'm willing to leave the old life behind and follow you, Jesus, with my whole heart. Amen. I just encourage, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction or you know someone uh, in, a, in your family or someone, just maybe one layer of, of connection of a person removed from you, please proactively take the initiative to reach out to them and say, hey, I saw this program where, you know what? There's actually help. There's actually hope. We'd be happy to talk to you, happy to bring you in or talk to you about that loved one that needs to come in.
Hi, my name is Jeremy Hudson. I'm the program director at the Father's House. We're located in Donaldson, Arkansas. We're a six-month residential program that helps men and women with uh, addiction problems and other life-controlling behaviors. You'll learn in our program how to not only work hard, but also through the disciplines of the Bible, you will learn how to follow God hard. I'm Richie Willis, and this is my wife, Carly Willis. Uh, we both run homes in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of addictions and out of a long life of bondage of of drugs and alcohol, and uh, we've been set free by the blood of Jesus, and uh, God has radically taken over our lives, and now we both have ministries. She has a, a house for women, and I have a house for two houses for men, um, and they're faith-based houses, and we just thank God for it. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages. We deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. If you need us, uh, give us a call. If you're serious about getting your life together, give us a call at 870-523-8413. The Harbor Home is really a house of miracles. It is located in a small church in central Arkansas, in Conway, Arkansas, and it's a faith-based program anywhere from six months to one year, uh, residential for women coming out of drug and alcohol addiction. We have women of all ages that come to the Harbor Home and from all over the United States, and really an opportunity for you to come to realize your value and your worth and uh, really to develop and cultivate a real relationship with Jesus Christ, which we believe is the answer for all addictive behaviors. Tell me how you came to know me. Was it at some preacher's plea? Were you all bound up with worry? When he came to set you free Did it take you your whole lifetime To release the debt you owe Or did you answer him the first time And relinquish all control Need to hear somebody testify I need to hear somebody say yeah, That you were lost and at the bottom And you could not find your way Just when life had lost all meaning And you wish that you could die Jesus came to you that day. You invited him to stay. I need to hear somebody testify.